So what is exactly SQL? Everything generates data and data is everywhere. Your first name is data, your mobile and everything inside the mobile is data. Car is as well generating a lot of data, bank, your finance statements, everything is data. And now of course the question is where do we store our data? Personally, we store a lot of our data in like Excels, spreadsheets, in a text file. So you store a lot of your data in different files. Now how about companies? They have a lot of things that generate a lot of data, that the products that they produce, their customers as well generating a lot of data and sales informations and a lot of things. So companies generate massive amount of data. So now the big question is how they handle the data, how they store it. Of course they cannot go and use like simple files. They need something bigger, stronger and smarter. And here where the database comes in. So think about the database, it's like a container for storing data. But instead of just dumping files into folders, the database organizes the data so it is easy to access, to manage and to search. So a database simply it is a container that stores data. So now you might ask why we are using database. Can't we just use files like I do it personally? Well let me tell you why we use databases. Imagine that someone asks the following question. Go and find the total spending in your data. So now in order for Mike to find the total spending and the costs he will be opening each of those files one by one searching for the costs trying to combine the data and it's gonna be very long and messy process. But now in the other side if your data in database and you want to ask a question it's gonna be very easy so all what you have to do is to talk to the database to ask a question and the database can answer your question with a result and now comes of course the question how do we talk to a database well we use SQL SQL is the language that you use in order to talk to the database it stands for structured query language SQL and here you have people that call it SQL like me and others that call it SQL SQL. There is no right and wrong, but if you follow me through the course, I think you will start saying SQL. So by using SQL, you can ask the database, you can ask your data, and the database can answer your question by sending you a result. So this process is very easy, simple, and fast, and this is way better than having your data stored in different files. Another reason why we use databases is that they can handle really huge amount of data. So sometimes we have like millions of data inside our database, but on the other side, if you are storing storing your data inside spreadsheets and you have like massive amount of data, what can happen? Your spreadsheets gonna just break. They simply can't handle big data. And another reason why we use databases is that it is just secure. It is safer to store important and critical data inside a database than just storing it in spreadsheets and files. So the databases are secure and you can control who is accessing what. So it is just more professional to store the data inside a database. All right, my friends, so far what we have learned, most of the companies stores their data inside a container called a database and for you in order to ask questions and to talk to your database you have to speak the language of SQL. Now I'm going to show you how it looks like usually in companies. So we have our data inside the database and then you will have multiple people with multiple roles that are just writing different SQLs in order to talk to the data. But now not only employees and people interact with the database, you could build a website or an application that as well interacts with the database by sending different SQLs. And of course, depend on how many people are interacting with the application and the website, it might generate really massive amount of SQLs that sends to the database. And not only that, you might have as well tools in order to do data visualizations where you have like a dashboard or a report, maybe created using Power BI or Tableau. And it is used by stakeholders and managers in order to make decisions. And as well, those tools will be connected to the database and creating SQLs. So now, as you can see, we have a lot of interactions with the database from people, applications, tools. A lot of things are generating SQLs and interacting with the database. But the database is just a container and storage, right? So we need something, a software that manage all those requests. And that's why we have something called Database Management System, DBMS. So it is a software that can manage all those different requests to our database. And it's gonna make the priority which SQL must be executed first. This software can as well manage the security, whether the SQL is allowed to be executed in the first place, 
database. So my friends, the DBMS is the software that can manage the database. And now we are not done yet. There is something missing. So we have our data, we have the software. What is missing here is the hardware. So in real companies, we cannot run that on our PC because first our PC is weak and as well, it goes offline. That's why we need a server. Server, it is like a very powerful PC and as well, it lives 24 seven. So it is always available. And here we can decide whether we can have a server inside the company or we can use cloud services in order to run our database. So my friends, so far what we have learned, the database, it is container to store the data. The SQL, it is the language in order to talk to the database. The DBMS, it is the manager, it manages the database. And the server, it is the physical machine where the database lives. So this is how it looks like. And now my friends, there are different types of databases. So let's see what do we have. The first and the most famous one, it is the relational database. It is very simple. It is like spreadsheets, call them table where we have columns and rows. And then there is like a relationship between those tables to describe how they relate to each other. And that's why we call it relational database. So if people hear a database, they're going to think about this one. Now we have another type of databases called key value. This time the data is organized completely different where you have pairs of keys and values think about it it's like a big dictionary where you have a word like the key and the definition of the word this is the value and now moving on to the next one this is as well important column based so now instead of grouping the data by the rows this type of databases group the data into columns that's why it's called column based and this is very advanced database in order to handle huge amount of data where the main purpose is to search for data moving on to another database called graph database the main focus here is the relationship between objects. So the main idea here is how to connect my data points. And now finally, we have the document database. The data is stored as entire documents where the structure of the data is not that important. What is more important is to fit everything in one page, in one document. And now if you look to those five types, we can group the document, graph, column based, key value, all those databases called no SQL databases and the relational database SQL database. And in this course, we will be focusing, of course, on the relational database. And I'm sure you have heard about like the Microsoft SQL server, the MySQL, the Postgres SQL, all those databases they are SQL relational database and for the key value you have the Redis the Amazon Dynamo DB and we have for the column based we have the Cassandra and the Redshift for the graph database we have the Neo4g and the very famous database the MongoDB as a document database now my friends for this course we're going to be focusing on the SQL relational databases because it is the most famous one and the most used one in companies and I will be focusing on the Microsoft SQL server so those are the different types of databases. Now the databases are very structured and organized. It has the following hierarchy. The starting point is the server. As you learned, it is powerful PC and it is where the database lives. And inside it, we can have multiple databases. So maybe you have a database for the sales and another one for the HR. So the server can host multiple databases. And as we learned, a database is a container of your data. Now moving on to the next level. In each database, we can have multiple schemas. A schema, it is like category or you can call it a logical container that we can use it in order to group up related objects. Like let's say you have hundreds of tables, so you can split all the tables that has to do with the orders in one schema and then another group of tables with the schema customers and so on. So it helps you to organize your tables and your objects in the database. And now if you go inside the schema, you can have multiple objects like tables. So now of course the question is, what is a table? It is like spreadsheet. It organizes your data into columns. The column define the data that you store inside it. So you have one column about the customer ID, another column about the names, the scores, the birthday. So each column is about one type of data. And sometimes we call the columns as fields. Now the other thing that you have in tables is the rows or sometimes we call it records. It is where actually the data is stored. Now in this example, each record represent one customer, one person. So we have one record for Maria, John and Peter. Those we call them rows. Now in each table, there is like one very important column called 
and the primary key. It is always very important to have like one unique identifier for each customer, for each role. And we use it for different purposes in order to combine it with another table, in order to identify quickly one customer. So it is unique, it's like fingerprint, and there is no two customers having the same ID. Now the overlapping between the columns and the rows, we have a single value, a cell. And each value, each column stores a specific data type. A data type, it is like what kind of data we are storing, like an integer 1, 2, 30, or a decimal where you have a decimal point, 3.14. Now, if you want to store characters, we have different data types for that. Like you want to store the name or the description. So here we can use the char or the var char. So you store inside them like the first name Maria or something. Now you might ask what is a char or var char. So the char always a fixed one. So if you define it like five characters, always it's going to go and reserve five characters from the space. But if you want things more dynamic, then you go with the var char. And now moving on, we have another data types called the date and time. So if you want to store a date like the birth dates and if you want to store the time information you can use the time data type so we call those stuff int decimal char date time they are data types so my friends as you can see SQL databases are very organized and structured Okay, so now let's focus more about the SQL itself. We have in SQL different type of commands. So let's say that we have a database and this database is empty. So we have nothing inside it. Now, of course, the first thing that you have to do is to write an SQL with the command create in order to create a brand new table in the database. So once you execute it, the database is going to go and build one. But this table is empty. So we have nothing inside it. So now what you have done here is you have defined something new, right? And we call this type of commands the data definition language the DDL. We have create to create something new, alter in order to edit something that already exists, and drop in order to delete something, to drop for example a table. So this is the first family of commands. Now if you look at our table, it is empty. What do we need? We need data. So let's say that we have a website or an application. Now this application is generating a lot of data. Now in order for this application to move the data inside our new table, it must use the SQL command insert. So if you execute insert, you can add Add new data inside your table. This type of commands we call it data manipulation language. And here we have three commands insert in order to insert a new data, update in order to update an already existing data, and delete in order to go and delete data from your table. And that's why we call it data manipulation language because you are manipulating your data. So what do we have now? We have table, we have data inside the table. Now what we can do? We can start asking questions. So let's say that you have analytical question about your data. Now all what you have to do is to write something called Called SQL query and inside it you use the command select but the whole thing we call it a query so you send a query to the database you have a question and the database can return for you the result the data answering your query your question and we call this type of activities using SQL the data query language and here we have only one and it is very famous we have the select we can use it in order to query our data so those are the three different commands in SQL and of course we're gonna learn and all of them but we will spend most of our time learning how to write the correct query for the correct answer. And now you might ask me, Bara, why we have to learn SQL? And if the time goes back, are you going to learn SQL again? Well, for sure, of course. And here are the top three reasons that I have. The first one, you have to learn it in order to talk to the data. You know, most of the companies stores their data in databases. And this is a standard way. This is how they do it. And if you want to work on the company in the data field and you want to talk to their data, then you have to use SQL. It's like you move to another country where they speak another language and you want to live there for a long time. You have to speak the language. The same thing here, if you want to work with data, you have to learn the language in order to speak to the database, the SQL. So this is for me the most important reason why we have to learn SQL. And SQL, it is in high demand. If you go now and check the job description of the software developer, data analyst, data engineer, data scientist, I promise you, you will find there that they are gonna demand for SQL. So you will find they are gonna ask for SQL skills almost in each job description. So if you check for any data related jobs, you will find that they are gonna ask 
for SQL skills. Now, another reason that I have is it is industry standard. So if you go and check multiple modern data platforms and tools like Power BI, Tableau, Kafka, Spark, Synapse, you will understand that there will be always a section where you have to enter SQL code. So most of those vendors adopt SQL because it is the standard. It is widely used. It is like selling points that their tools are easy. So those are my top three reasons why SQL is still relevant and why you have to learn it. Okay, my friends. So with that, we have now clear understanding what is an SQL, why we need it, what are databases and their different types, why do we have DPMS, servers, and as well now you have understanding how things are very organized and structured inside the databases. So that's all. This is SQL. All right. So with that, we have covered the basics about what is SQL and databases. Now in the next step, we're going to go and set up our environment. So that means we're going to prepare your PC with the data, with the databases and all the tools that you need in order to learn SQL.